Well, congratulations, you've made it all the way to CD4. Here you're gonna learn some of my most favorite skills, three-way calling, the importance of edification, and also the importance of events. What we wanna cover right now, we've gone through the dream, we've talked about reasons why, we've talked about the importance of list building, contacting and inviting, the importance of a sense of urgency, we've talked about how to build through the cold market. What we're gonna talk about now is three-way calling and the importance of edification. This one here, guys, is so important. I want you to understand the importance of, of this tool. Remember what we talked about, tools are just nothing more than systems or mechanisms that make doing your job a whole lot easier and simpler. Three-way calling, in my opinion, is one of the most important tools in network marketing. I think it's the most underutilized tool and network marketing as well. Why is that? Is because we have a system of education and most people have not gotten that education and they don't understand the importance of it. So what I wanna do here is I want you to pay close attention to this one here. Because if you wanna really skyrocket your business, if you wanna start building a massive organization, guys, learn how to do three-way calls and learn how to teach your people how to do three-way calls. Teach your people how to do three-way calls, and I'll tell you, you would make an absolute fortune. There's several different methods of exposure that we have in the business. Several different methods of exposure. And I think the baseball diamond really simplifies the steps that you process a new prospect. We have several different modes of exposure. We have executive lunches, you have business briefings, you have one-on-ones, you have two-on-ones, you have conference calls, you have a sizzle line, you have PBRs, you have several different modes of exposing the business. You can do three-foot rules, you can do tape handout. And so with those several different modes, each of those modes are very important, but that's just the method of exposure. That's only the method of exposure. So we talk about the zones as well. The white zone is what? Massive exposure. That's when you should understand what your plan is for this month. How many people are you going to send to a business briefing? How many people are you going to have go through an executive luncheon? How many people are you going to do a one-on-one -on -one with? Know what your numbers are before you even start the month. I was listening to Jim Rohn and he said this. He said, when should you start your week? As soon as it's finished. <laughs> to go out and try to start building a week before you've designed it is kind of crazy. What if they start building this hotel before they had it finished up here? Wouldn't work. You follow what I'm saying? So have a purpose. Be on purpose. There's no success by accident. And so understanding this three-way calling is going to be very important to your success in the business. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire warm market training. You've had that before, but I want you to understand something here. You've got your prospects up here, and what your goal is to swing. Your, your goal is to swing. That's just the sifting and sorting that we're talking about. You sifted and sorted, you got them to first base, and that was to get them to one of these events. Here is the sifting and sorting process. This is what we talked about when you first start building a list and your invite, your approach, contacting and inviting. You've gotten them to one particular event, whether it's a business briefing, whatever it is, any method of exposure. That's first base. That's important. But the key thing is this here. You're trying to get a score. Your goal is to score. Once you've got them... Here, once you've gone ahead and swung, your goal is to get them to first base and to get them to second base. Sometimes they'll go all the way from second base and they'll come in to score. Sometimes you have to get them to third base. Well, how do you get them to other bases? It's what we call BAM FAM. BAM FAM. B A M F A M. Book a meeting from a meeting. You book a meeting from a meeting. Well, guess what? A three way call is a meeting. In my opinion, it's one of the most important meetings that you can have in network marketing. Because now this is when you're going to start passing the buck. You're going to start passing on and allow somebody else who has the credibility to use their credibility to close your prospects. So the three way call is very important. Let me give you a couple of elements and some etiquette on three way calling and the importance of the edification on three way calling. First of all, when you're doing a three-way, you want to make sure, if at all possible, you set up a time with your upline to do a three-way. If at all possible, set up a time. Now, sometimes you just may be at the spur of the moment. You have a prospect, a hot prospect. You haven't set up a time. You know that you need to bam fam. And getting them on the phone with your upline leader, if you may need to get them on the phone with Derwin, get them on the phone with Regina or Ed or, or whoever it is that you may need to get them on the phone with right away, and you may not have an appointment. That's okay. Try to have an appointment. That way, we don't have to rush. And that way you don't have to not have your upline be available. So what you're going to do is get them to 
Set up a time. The second thing that you want to do is just make sure that you be on time. If you set up a time at 3 o'clock, 3.03 is not acceptable to call. 3.01 is not acceptable to call. Don't call at 3.05 and say, hey, listen, I've been trying to get him and I can't get him, so we're just going to have to cancel the call because next time you try to set up an appointment, we may not be available because you've already set up a system and a habit to let us know that you're not going to honor the time that you set up. So if you can't get them, your upline needs to get a call at, at least five minutes beforehand. Say, hey, listen, I have not gotten them. I'm just calling to let you know that I haven't gotten my prospect. I'm going to try to get them, and I'll call you back right at 3 o'clock if I don't get them. Or I'll call you back a minute before 3 if I can't get them. But that way we at least know where our time is going to be spent. The key thing is this, guys. It's very simple and easy to put people in this business, and there's... Thousands of people, some of you are going to have hundreds, and some of you are going to have thousands of people in your group, and you're going to be doing three ways left and right, and you just want to make sure that your time is well spent or well invested. So honor the time. Make sure that the person has seen a presentation. Don't go from sifting and sorting to second base or to a three-way. Don't bam fat. Don't book them to the first meeting on a three-way call. Why? Because what you're asking your upline to do is sell the business for you. That's not our job. I don't sell the business at all. Anybody I have to sell the business to, I'll have to sell them to come to a function. I'll have to sell them to buy a product. I'll have to sell them on being on auto ship, and I'm not in the sales business. I am in the business of developing and mentoring people who want to make a six and seven figure income. And I can't develop somebody who, need, who I need to sell to do the things that's required to build a business. Make sure that they've been exposed to the business. Why? Because I don't want to get on and have to talk about the products and services that we market. I don't want to talk, I don't need to get on the business and have to explain to them for the first time that we have a cold market program, an app program. I don't want to get on for the first time and have to explain the different industries that we participate in through our company. That's not what I want to do. The purpose of a three-way call is for somebody else that you've edified to validate what they've just heard. Remember I talked about social proof? People need social proof. This gives them the social proof that somebody else is doing it, somebody else is having success, and that we have a testimony. Now, edification. You want to make sure that you've already edified your upline or whoever's doing the three-way call for you, and it always is your upline. Never cross-line, never somebody in your success team as well. It's always upline. Let me share with you what I call the edification triangle. The edification triangle. And then we'll get back to the process of edification. If you look here, this is a triangle. This is you. This is your prospect, and this is your expert or your upline. I want you to understand something. Well, why is it important for you to get validation? Because people who know you personally, they know you. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. You can't beat your own chest. You can't tell them how great you are, but guess what? Somebody else that you edified, they can. And we can make you look like a hero but you can't do it yourself. Vice versa. You can make me look like a hero to that person. I can't get on the phone and talk about how great I am. I can't talk about the money I've made. I can't talk about all of those things, but you can do it for me. That's very important, guys. The edification is incredible. This is the key thing here. The people that you know will listen to somebody that they don't know before they'll listen to you. That's people. If you understand people, you'll make money. So between you and your prospect... There's what we call trust. They do trust you. They know that you'll never do anything illegal, immoral, or unethical. They have trust for you. I want you to understand this edification triangle. There's trust between you and your prospect. There is trust, but there is no respect. They don't have the respect that you can help them make a six or a seven figure income because they know that you just borrowed 200 bucks from them two weeks ago. You follow what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. They don't respect your ability. That's why people say, well, I've been trying to get them to a meeting, and they aren't coming. That's why you are trying to sell them, and they already know that you're two months behind on Visa. They already know that you had this repossessed. They already know, they already know that stuff, and they're like, man, if she was making so much money or he was making so much money, you know, um, why did they borrow some money from me? So they don't have any respect for you in that sense. They understand what you're, even if you're doing okay right now, but they know your past. See, I couldn't sell the people or I couldn't present and tell the people how great the business was even after I had made a lot of money in this industry because people knew what my past was. 
They knew what my past was. That's what they remember. You follow what I'm saying? But they do have trust for me. They know I wouldn't put them in anything bad. They don't have any respect, but they do have trust. Between you and your expert, based on how you edify them, there is no trust because they don't know that person from Adam. But there is a lot of respect. Because of the things that you have said about your expert. Before you put a person on a three-way call with your, with your upline, make sure that you've edified. Now, you edify their accomplishments and the people that they've helped in this business. You edify their accomplishments and the people that they've helped in this business. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So if I'm putting a person on the phone, and let's just say here I got Derwin, and Derwin is my upline. Oh, I'll just give you an even better example of, of uh, what, I've, what I've actually done and how I've actually, the exact things that I've said. I'm putting people on the phone with Brad. Before I get Brad on the phone, I remember I've already established my appointment. He knows exactly what time I'm calling. I let them know. I say, hey, listen, I'm Bam Family. They went to an appointment. They liked what they saw, but they didn't make a decision. Great. I tell you what. You know, I was talking to Brad. This guy's absolutely phenomenal. This guy went from $35 in the bank to over $300,000 in cash in his bank after he paid all, all of his bills in just one year, 12 months in this business. He's a multimillionaire helping thousands of people, and his goal is to help 100 people become a millionaire. I've already been selected as one of them, and we're looking for some other people. Brad told me that if I found somebody who was sharp like you, he'd take five minutes of his time and see if he can talk to you and tell you what he's doing to develop these millionaires. Do you think that person has some value for Brad's time now? Oh, yeah. See, they don't understand who Brad is, or they don't understand who you are or who your upline is until you say it. They don't understand anything about his past. All they know is the good things that I just told them about him. Does that make sense to you? That's all that they know. And so what I'll do then is this. Great. Three o'clock. I'll give you a call. I actually call you five minutes to three. We'll see if we can get five minutes of his time. They've already been exposed to the business. And so now what happens is this. I'm going to get them on the phone with Brad. This is what's happening, guys. This is incredible. This is why three-way calls are so incredible. They've got the trust for me, but they don't have respect. They don't have trust for Brad, but they've got respect. Now we've got trust, plus we've got respect. That's going to equal success. Every single time, if you do it right. That's the edification part. I'm going to build him up. I'm going to let them know, hey, he's a very good friend of mine. He's got a large organization. His time is very, very valuable. And I don't know if he can give you 10 minutes, but I'm sure I can probably get five minutes. I'm building up his time. I'm making it seem like, hey, listen, this is going to be an honor, because it is, to speak to my upline or the person who's helping me build a business. Let me share something with you. It doesn't have to be a diamond. It doesn't have to be a platinum who you edify like that. Guess what? It can be your upline director. If they've helped you pop an ad in the paper, if they've helped you close a person, if they've done a PBR for you, guess what? That's the person who's helping you. Once upon a time, I was a director. People couldn't edify me as a platinum, but they edified me just like I was a platinum. You follow what I'm saying? It's not the pen that you edify, it's the person. It's the person that you edify. You edify the person. Now, so I've already done my edification. Don't get on the phone and then start the edification because I don't want to hear a two-minute thing on how great I am. Edify before you get on the phone with me. And then when you get them on the phone, this is how the phone call goes. Hey, Brad, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to talk to my prospect or to talk to Greg. Brad, I know your time is very, very valuable. Greg's excited. He saw the plan. And uh, you know what? His uh, major concern was uh, the amount of money that could be made. Or his concern was that he'd been in network marketing before and, and uh, really, really wasn't able to build it, wasn't plugged into a system. Greg, I want you to meet Brad Hager. This is my, uh, my upline. This is the uh, number one income earner in the company. I've told you a lot about him. Greg, I want you to meet Brad. Brad, I want you to meet Greg. And I shut my mouth. I shut my mouth, and I don't say one other word at all. Zero, nothing whatsoever. Well, why is that? Who's the expert here? My upline. I'm not edifying me. I'm not edifying him. As soon as I start to talk before I'm spoken to, what I'm saying is that he's not the expert. You need to be listening to me 
And so what he's saying is not important. Because most of you are on the phone, especially the brand new people, you're so excited and you're thinking, oh, you know what? Oh, uh, I hadn't heard him talk about the ad program. You didn't tell him about, you know, you didn't tell him about this particular product. You didn't tell him about how you can save money on travel. You didn't tell him about this and that. Because, see, you're on one wavelength and we're on a whole nother one. That's why you always do three waves with somebody who's plugged into the system who understands people. Because, see, because we understand people, we know what motivates them. And that's why we get paid the big bucks, because we've learned the art of dealing with people. There's certain things I may say to a Bobby that I may not say to Wendy. There are certain things I may say to Wendy that I may not say to Regina. Certain things I'll say to Kenneth that I may not say to Brina or I may not say to Shanita because I'm there listening. See, the three way call is not about saying the right things. It's about listening. It's about listening and getting them to sell themselves. You've already done the edification. I'm not going to get on there and sell the business to them. So as soon as you talk, this is what happens here, guys. I want to just give you kind of an ironclad rule. This may seem kind of harsh, but after you do it a couple of times, you'll understand how important it is. As soon as you start talking, the first time after we get off the three-way, I'll let you know, give you a little bit of coaching. Second time you start talking, I hang up the telephone. I'll let you continue the conversation yourself. Hey, listen, I got a call. I got a catch. I'll talk with y'all later. And I'll let you finish. I've done it a couple of times. Guess what? The people have never, ever, ever come back and start talking again. Guys, that's very, very important. Don't start buying it back. This person is the expert. That means that they understand the business. You've edified them. They have respect for them. They don't have respect for you. So anything that you say is not respected. This is very important, guys. This is the edification and communication triangle when it comes to doing a three-way call. Your upline typically will ask for the check on that three-way call. We're going to ask for the check. Should we not get the check? Guess what we're going to do? Bam, fam. Bam, fam. Bam, fam. Book a meeting from a meeting. They don't make a decision when they're on the phone with me? Great. Well, I'll tell you what, Willie. You know, I understand that you had those concerns and you need to uh, speak it over with your wife. Listen, why don't you do this here? Saturday morning, I'm having a training session. Why don't you come and see and get these questions answered because you know what? I want you to understand our orientation program. Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. Let me ask you a question, Willie. What do you have going on at Saturday that's going to put six or seven figures in your pocket? See, I don't ask him, can he come? How many of you made your own decision to come? I don't ask a person, can they come? We're not, there's no bondage. None of you are in jail except from 9 to 5. But anyway, um, <laughs> just kidding. So I'm not going to ask him, can he come? Willie, what are you doing at 9 o'clock Saturday morning that's going to put six or seven figures in your pocket? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. What are you doing? I'm telling you guys, l learn these phrases. You wonder why the three percenters make all the money? It's because we understand how to communicate with people. I know how to get the right answer from Will Willie. Willie, what are you doing Saturday morning that's going to put six or seven figures in your pocket? He may have golf planned. But if I ask him, well, Willie, uh, do you have anything planned for Saturday morning? Yes, I got golf. But I'll say, Willie, what do you have planned that's going to put six or seven figures in your pocket? Nothing. Great. Willie, Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, this is where you need to meet me. I want you to see our orientation and our training program. It's going to blow you away, and you'll understand why so many people in this company are making money. 9 o'clock, be dressed sharp. I want to introduce you to some people. You will be there, won't you, Willie? Willie, you will be there, won't you? <laughs> He says, you bet. <laughs> He's writing it down. <laughs> Did you write down, you bet? <laughs> so I'm bam famming, if you follow me. OK? Now, once you've bam fam, you keep bam famming until you get them on to home plate. See, guys, I'll tell you, it's a process. It's like an assembly line. It's an assembly line. That's all. It's a pipeline. That's all it is. We can call it a baseball diamond. You can call it a pipeline. You can call it an assembly line. Guess what? When you start a process of an assembly line, they start with the raw materials, with the base, with the frame of what's going on. The frame of what's going on here is you're sifting and sorting. You're finding out if that person is looking for an opportunity. This is where you're looking to collect a decision on whether or not they will get on your assembly line. Once you do that, you put the first part on them, and that's the opportunity. You let them get exposed to the opportunity through some method or fashion. So that means that they started from here on the assembly line, they moved over to here. Now, if they didn't make a decision there, what's going to happen is they're going to move further along down the assembly line and they're going to get bam fam to a three-way call. 
they don't make a decision there, we're going to bam fam them again, maybe to another three-way call, even on the higher up line. You follow what I'm saying? Don't start out with me. Most of you think, well, you know what? I need to get Holton to do my three ways. No. I was doing three ways when I was a director closing people. Has nothing to do with the pen. Do three ways with your plugged in upline who understands our system. That's who you do three ways with. Why? Because see, guess what? If you passed up Bobby and you went straight to me, or if you passed up me and you went straight to Brad, guess what? They may need another three way call. Who are they going to do it with? Nobody. So you start down here, and then you start working your way up. You know what they see? Man, there is a chain of people that I have access to who understands this business, and each person I talk to make more money and more money and more money. And then they start to see that they have access to that as well. So if they don't get in there, guess what? We bam fam them to a training. They don't get there, we bam fam them to a meeting. Guess what? I didn't make a decision on the phone when I first talked to Brad. Guess what he did? He understood. He bam found me to the very next meeting, which was that same day, and I was a thousand miles away, and it was a $600 plane ticket, a couple hundred dollars a night for a hotel, and I had four hours to make a decision. But what if he was some inexperienced rookie scared to ask me, what am I doing to make a six-figure, seven-figure income in the next four hours? I wouldn't be in the business today. I guarantee you, if I would have waited till he came to Dallas, I it would have never happened. The be back bus never comes back. <laughs> the be back bus never comes back. Well, you know what? I'll be back. I'll just come to another meeting. The be back bus never comes back. And so I wouldn't, and you wouldn't be here either. But I was so glad that he had the fortitude to say, hey, what are you doing today? Why don't you come meet me today? Four, you know, I had four hours to be there. I made a decision quickly. Okay, I'll do it. Went, saw the plan. He bam fam me. I didn't even sign up when I was there. I wanted to play hard to get, like I'm some big, you know, big shot. <laughs> Guess what? They bam fam me again with Ron Goals. Hey, listen, Holton, when you get back home, I know you got a couple people that you want to talk to. Why don't we do this? Let me talk to you and those couple of people and tell them what you just saw. I gave an appointment. See, successful people honor their appointments. So if I book the appointment, guess what? I got to honor it. Now he bam found me. Now guess what he's got? Not only me, he's got my group to talk to. If I don't do it, they're going to do it. So I got to do it anyway. <laughs> the pros understand this stuff. The professional people understand the art of bam fami. Ron Goes talks about it. How many of you have ever been to a dental, dental office, walked out of there, and they didn't schedule your next appointment? Never happened. They understand bam fami. Before you leave, I mean, they'll hit the security on that door and won't let you. Hey, hold on for a second. I mean, why you, I went and got a root canal recently. While I'm in the chair, while I'm in the chair, I mean, the lady comes in there. Hey, listen, your next appointment is going to be this here date. What, day, what time is going to be better for you, morning or afternoon? Guess what they do? People in the dentistry business, they have classes, training on how to bam fam. It doesn't happen by accident. This is all on purpose. All of this is on purpose. You bam fam. You book a person from a meeting to a meeting. Three-way calling, very important. As many prospects as you have going through, this, through your pipeline, guys, you should be three-waying like crazy. It's real easy to sponsor people. You know why some of your businesses are not growing to the degree of what you want them? Because you are not disciplined. Is it that you don't know how? All the information that I'm teaching you right now, all of you know how to do it already. You're just not doing what you know how to do. You'll get started here at home plate. You'll go to first base. You get so excited because they showed up at your business briefing or they showed up. You think you've already scored because they showed up. Now, it's nowhere near over. They showed up, and guess what they'll tell you? Oh, this looks real good. Man, this is awesome. I think I'm going to do it. I'll get back with you. You say, okay, great. Awesome. Here's my phone number. Get back with me. That's a rookie way to handle that. What you do is this. Great. Nicole, I work by calendar. I'm sure that you do as well. My time is valuable, so is yours. I know you want to get back with me, but let me see when you can. I'll take out my calendar. It's a Thursday business briefing. Great. I'll tell you what. Uh, I've got tomorrow and Saturday open. Which day is better for you? Friday. Friday, I've got two times available, morning or afternoon. If we do morning, we'll do 10 o'clock tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. Afternoon, we'll do 4 o'clock Friday. 
And I only have about 15 minutes to go over some things here. Which time can we do, 4 o'clock or 10? I give them, the, it's called the alternate close. I let them choose one. Either or. Either or. You give them two options, they have to choose one. People are conditioned to make a decision based on the options that they have. How many of you have ever gone to a buffet that didn't have lobster and say, hey, listen, can I have lobster? You don't say that because that's not your options. You choose what's on the menu. I always provide a menu. Here, 10 o'clock or 4 o'clock, that's the menu. That's what you're going to choose from. Great. Let's go ahead and take out our calendars and let's mark that. Wow, what a concept. You mean to tell me you take out a calendar when you ban famming? Absolutely. Ban famming without a calendar is almost certain to end in disappointment. Four o'clock tomorrow. Tell you what, this is what I need you to do. Whatever the concern is, look over the website, all that type of stuff, make a list of your questions so that we can get your questions answered and we can resolve and show you how to put some money in your pocket. Why do I do that? Because see, if I let them tell me they'll get back with me, they're in control. If they're in control, they understand that you need them in their business and they'll never call you back. Very, very, very seldom would they call you back. Now, when they see I do that, they understand that I'm a very serious business person. I run my business like a business. I don't care if they don't get involved in the business. I want them to know that I'm a very serious business person. So I booked that appointment. The other thing is this. If I call them back without an appointment, it's considered what we call hounding. Man, why does he keep calling me? See, tomorrow when I call them at 4 o'clock, I'm not hounding them because I had an appointment. I know who I'm dealing with. I have an appointment, 4 o'clock. Guys, become a professional. Become an expert at every aspect of the business. It's simple to become an expert. It's just doing it. It's just doing it. The thing I understand is this here. Only 20% of the people are going to do the information that I'm talking about. Everybody in here has a chance to do it. Every one of you have a chance at a six-figure income and to become free, financially independent, and wealthy, but only 20% of you are going to do 80% of what I'm talking about. Most of you have heard this information. You still get them to a business briefing. You jump for joy just because they came and you think you've got somebody, just because they signed up at a business briefing. You don't have anybody sponsored until that person that you sponsored sponsored two people. Wow, that's a powerful statement. Why don't we take a 30-second mental break and digest everything that we just learned? If you don't go through this process, you can't do it for them and you can't teach them. And so all you teach them is bad habits of getting excited when a person comes to first base. And then now you got a whole bunch of excited people who, hey, we have 15 people at the business briefing today. And they're all excited, going nowhere, fast. Because they don't know how to ban fam. They don't know how to book a meeting from a meeting. You don't know how to do three-way calls. Guys, learn this. This is the art. Three-way calling is an art. Edification is the fuel that makes the three-way works. Don't ever get on the phone and say, hey, Holton, Holton, this is John. John, this is Holton. Go ahead, Holton. <laughs> no edification whatsoever. I can't tell that person anything. Trust me. Hey, Holton, listen, uh, you know what? Hey, listen, this is a guy here. He's interested in the business. And I want you to talk to him. Holton, John, John Holton. You've taken all the power away. So you know what John thinks? John thinks I'm just like you. He doesn't have any respect for you, so he doesn't, definitely doesn't have any respect for me. And he doesn't have any trust for me. So nothing I say is meaning anything to him. That's why the edification is very important. You understand? That's why the edification is very important. While you're edifying, how do you edify? You edify with stories. You edify with stories. You don't have to edify with facts and figures. Edify with stories. Stories are the most important aspect of edification. How do I build my business? I tell stories all the time. I've made more money from talking about uh, Mama Graham than anybody else in my group. Now, is she the number one income earner in my group? No. But her story, in my opinion, is the most phenomenal in this entire company. 75 years young, bronze executive in a company, making more money in this company here than she ever made in corporate America for working 35 years. Is that a strong story or what? 
She had a fixed income. Operating on a fixed income. Got involved in this business here. Now she doesn't have a fixed income anymore. Guys, that's a very, very strong story. Why don't you use, if you're in her group, why aren't you using her for a three-way? All she has to do is get on and tell her story. Facts, tell, stories, sell. All I do when I'm on the three-way, I get on there and I tell my story. People just want social proof. They want to know, does it work and can I do it? Those are the two things people want to know. Does it work and can I do it? And will I get some help? For some people, will I get some help? Does it work, can I do it, and will I get some help? That's what a three-way call does. Now, there's three stories that you tell in network marketing. Three stories. Guys, get these stories and I want you to understand them. I want you to burn them up here permanently. Understand this, guys. I'm equipping you right now with some stuff that if you use this stuff, you will go out and be able to make a fortune if you use it. If you don't use it, you'll go out and you have the same results that you've been having. Now, the first story in network marketing is your upline story. Why? Because you just got started and you don't have one yet. Your upline story. Talk about your upline. I talked about the upline. I talked about the help that I got from the upline. I talked about how they were on time picking me up from the airport when I went out there to see the business. It was stories. I was just sharing stories. I didn't tell them anything about the company because I didn't know anything about the company. Some people try to get so educated on the facts and figures of the company. How this works, how does this product work, how does that work, how does this work, how does that work. And guess what? People are not interested in that. I, I, use, I give an example all the time. Who's, who in here, I'm going to give you another example. Who in here in the business is less than a month old? Danny. Danny, how much volume does it take to get a car bonus? How much volume does it take created in your business to get car bonus? 100 BV, he says. So who else in here is new? This is not to embarrass anybody. How much volume does it take to get matching bonuses? Don't know. Don't know. Who else in here is a month? Now, raise your hands if you're, I'm proving a point here. Uh, Julian, question, how much volume does it take to cycle four times? You don't know. Now, Danny, when I got started in network marketing, was I rich or broke? broke. I was broke. Did I own a company? Did I work for somebody else? Or no, did I have both? I had both. Danny, what kind of car do I drive? It's the big one. You follow what I'm saying? They don't understand the facts and figures, but he knows all of my story. He bought my story. He didn't buy the comp plan. He doesn't know it. If it took 100 BV to get a car bonus, everybody in here would be driving a car. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? So the facts and figures have nothing to do with whether a person gets in. It's the story. So the first story that you tell is your upline story. You know why I bought that car? I didn't buy it for me. I bought it for you. It's a story that you need to be sharing. Bobby just went out and got that car. He didn't buy it. I know for a fact he didn't get that one for him. He knows that. He bought it for the group. It's a story to tell. It's a story, a success story to tell. Durham went out and guess what he wanted? Durham wanted a Toyota. <laughs> Land Cruiser. I say, man, nobody getting fired up about a Toyota Land Cruiser. <laughs> you better go over there and get yourself one of those Lexuses. He got a Lexus. Why? For the group. It's a story to tell. I tell about their story more than anybody else. Bobby only had his car two or three days. Man, I probably told that story about 20, 30, 40, 50 times to people who are even in the group and to prospects. You follow what I'm saying? It's the stories that we tell. Upline story is what you tell. Now, people are going to ask you questions like, well, hey, how much money have you made? I don't know. All I know is this. That's all you need to say. How much money have you made, Brina? I don't know. All I know is this. I'm working with a guy named Holton Bug. This guy was broke when he first got started in internet network marketing. $250,000 in debt. Now he's completely out of debt. The company just purchased him a 745 BMW Li. It's an $84,000 car if you want to go out there and buy it brand new. This guy's helping so many people earn a high six-figure income. He's helping me. I got a question for you. Who's helping you? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the stories. It's the stories that sell. It's the stories. So you tell your upline story. 
How much money have you made? I don't know. All I know is this. The person who I'm involved in business with had $35 in the bank. Twelve months later, he had over $300,000 in cash that paid off all of his bills, and he's helping 100 people become a millionaire. How many millions have you made yet? See, I always answer a question with a question. That's, those are the stories that I, I answer objections with stories. I edify with stories. Those are the stories that I tell. First story. Second story that you tell is your story. Your story. When you get one. Some of you don't even understand that you have a very strong story. How many of you have at least sponsored one person? At the executive level. George, your, your story is so powerful you don't even understand it right now. He doesn't understand it because he tells it all the time. He does understand this. Let's say for, I know George sponsored his first two executive plans. How long did it take you to do that? Uh, it took about less than a month. Uh, two months. About two weeks? Now, this is the key thing I want you to understand. How much time did you put into sponsoring those two people? How much time did you put into sponsoring those two people? How much time was the presentation? Two hours. Two hours. A piece? So it's four hours. Let me share a story. Well, how much money have you made, George? I don't know. I don't know much about this business at all. All I know is I'm plugged into a system that's incredible, and with four hours of work, I made over 480 bucks. It's a little over 120 bucks an hour. Now, how much you say you make an hour again? You don't have to be a platinum to have a story. Some of you who've run ad, how many of you have run an ad and had at least one person to call? Two people, three people. Most of you had, some of you have 50 people to call. How much money have you made? I don't know. All I know is this. Part of our system allows us to attract all kinds of people around the country to call us about our business. Matter of fact, this week, I just ran one of the ads, and I had 15 people call me who were looking for a call back, and my upline and myself are going to decide which ones we're going to put in our business. How many people have called you lately about an opportunity? It's a story. I'm telling a story about the system. I'm not getting into, well, I made X amount of dollars. You know why? Because I'll tell you this. When I used to tell people what my income was, it was either too much or too little. It's never the right number. I tell a story. I tell stories. That's all I tell. Hey, listen, you know what? Before I got involved in internet network marketing, I had a car repossessed. I got involved in this industry, and I was able to go out and buy me a Lexus Cash. Don't know. But I just tell stories. I don't tell them what my income is. I just tell the story. That's your story. How's it working for you? I don't know. All I know is this. You know, my first time exposing this business to people, we put about eight people in our organization. I have no idea how it works, but this thing is growing like crazy. It could have been eight CPCs. It could have been eight wholesale IBOs. It doesn't matter. They will go back and leave with that story. Third story that you tell is the most important one, and this is your success team story. Your success team are the people in your organization that you're helping build a business. Some people call it downline. I just don't like the term downline or referring to people as a downline because I don't look down on anybody. You want people below you? Go walk in the graveyard. Some of y'all will get that later on. <laughs> okay, now, so, success team. How is it working? I don't know. All I know is this. One of the people that I've been able to help become financially independent is a guy named Bobby. He answered one of our ads, got involved in the business, has replaced a six-figure income, and just bought a brand-new BMW. I think it's working okay. <laughs> How's it working? Uh, I don't know. You know, one of the people I sponsored named Regina Baker got involved and never had any, made any money in this industry before. She's the number 25 income earner in the company out of 35,000 people. She's doing okay, completely retired, financially independent. How's it working? Well, I don't know. You know, one of the guys I sponsored named is Derwin. You know, Derwin got involved in the business, had a pretty bad experience, never made any money, got involved, and two months later was able to not need a job anymore after working for this company for 11 years with an engineering degree. He's the number 11 income earner in the entire company out of 35,000 people. You know what they're thinking? You must be way up there. Because <laughs> I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the people that I've helped. How's it working? Oh, it's working pretty good. Did you ever think stories could be so powerful? Absolutely. Why don't we take a 30-second action break? But during this break, I want you to write down three stories. First, your support line story. Second, your story, and then someone on your success team.
Okay, how many of you went to college and never ever went to class? Why did all the hands go down? Only people who could do, maybe somebody like Willie can do that. I mean, this guy, he, he, you know, he finished college, I think, in three semesters. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you had to go to class. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you at least took three years to go to college? A minimum of three years. After three years, got a piece of paper that qualified you for an income that you're not satisfied with. Raise your hands. I got more hands that went up just then. Man, okay. Well, if that's the case. The reason that you went to college is because you needed to get equipped with the essential information and education to be able to perform at a certain level for your chosen field of endeavor. Am I correct? That's correct. Well, guess what? In network marketing, there's a system of education as well. The difference here is that the professors in network marketing make the income that you desire. How many of you would love to have the income that your professors made in your corporate America? Why do you think you've ended up making about the same amount as they've made? Because you've learned from them. Let me share something with you. The created cannot exceed what the creator has done. So if you're a disciple of somebody making $50,000 a year, they can't teach you how to make $51,000 a year. Because if they could, they'd already be doing it. They may teach you, but they can't do it with any degree of authority. That's the important thing that I want you to understand about the educational system that we have in network marketing. Now, in our company here, guess what? The people that we put in front of the room in terms of trainers, at power trainings, at success seminars, at national events, do you think that these people make the money that you are looking to make? Yes. Well, why wouldn't you be there to learn from those people? That's what you want to understand. That's where the information is. What I have done is I've understood that there's a system that we have of events, and I already know because I have a game plan. I already know over the next 12 months, I already know, and I've already checked off in my calendar, which months I'll be at which particular event or how much time I need to go to those events. And I've already predetermined and made a decision that I'll be at every single event. Why? Because let's just say there's one major event that we have a month. How many of you had to go to class more than once a month? <laughs> Guess what? Most of your books cost more than what our functions are for one of your classes. That's not including the tuition that you paid for that particular class. And so this is what I've done. I've learned to build my business from event to event. I never look at my business for 12 months and say, what am I going to accomplish in 12 months? I look at my business for 12 months first, and then I look at the event schedule, and I work my business from event to event. Because the events is what keep people in the business. It's the lifeblood of the business. It's what I call where the juice and where the, where the emotions come from. People make a, a decision to build this business on an emotional basis. It's never a logical decision. It's based off of emotion. And you cannot make an emotional decision if you're not impacted emotionally. How do you get impacted emotionally? By putting people around the events. When you've got a system, three, four, five hundred people, and you have people to come across your stage and start telling their story and tell you where they were, how they were in the dumps, and how they had their car repossessed, or how they were living a substandard life, and because of this company, and because of this system, and because of the upline, and because of the help that they have, now they're making a six-figure income. Now that they're completely out of debt, now that they never have to work a job again, and if I can do it, you can do it too. Guess what? You get impacted emotionally, and you understand, man, there's social proof. There's somebody who's actually done it. I can identify with that person because I was just like them. But it happens at events. This Saturday training, this is not what I call an event. This is good stuff. But I'm talking one of the major deals that we have. And so what it is is this, guys. You have to learn the art of allowing people to get themselves in an atmosphere that's going to be conducive for success. I am fanatical when it comes to events. Some people think I'm too fanatical. Some people think that we overpromote for events. But it's only the people who don't make the income per year that we make per month. And I'm not trying to be arrogant about it, but listen, if I agree with you, I'd have your income. If you agree with me, you have mine. And so I had to learn who should I agree with. And it wasn't me. I didn't agree with myself because I didn't have the income that I wanted. I started agreeing with the people who were making the money that I wanted to make. And from that point on, I made a decision. Every time an event comes around, if I'm qualified for it, I'll be there. Because I asked myself this question, what am I going to be doing that day that's going to show me how to make a six or a seven figure income? Nothing. That's why I'll be there every single time. If they call an event and it's on Mars, I'll figure out a way. I'll call NASA and say, hey, listen, Willie, we need to call some people up there at NASA, figure out a way to get to NASA because you know what? There's an event there. And some people think that's kind of fanatical. Some people have season tickets. 
And I'm not against season tickets, but guess what? You'll never miss a game because you have season tickets. Because you know what? You've already predetermined that for the next 10 years, you're going to be at every one of those home games and watch other people get wealthy. I've got season tickets too. But I've got season tickets to my events, to these events, to what we have here. And that's why the events are incredible. The key thing is this. When you go to events, you can't go by yourself. You always want to bring people on your team. I don't care how brand new they are into the business. The key thing I understand is this. The newer the people, the more willing they are to go to events. The more willing they are to invest in the education that they're going to get for the business. Guys, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how important events are, and I want you to really understand this. Some people just tell people that, hey, listen, you know, we've got uh, such and such coming up, and if it's available on your schedule, uh, why don't you consider coming? See, it's our job to do what we call provide and protect. That means I have to protect the people from what I call the negative influences. We've talked about that before. And then I have to provide for them the system of education, and I have to provide for them an atmosphere where they can grow the fastest, get from point A to B with the shortest period of time and the least amount of effort, and it's called promoting for events. And some of you don't understand this right now, but when you, if you really want to make a full-time income, you better understand this. If you're here to make three, four, five hundred dollars a month or a thousand dollars a month, you don't have to go to events. You can exclude yourself from that, and I'm not talking to you right now. But if you're here to become, how many of you really would love to be full-time, flush your job, and have a 30-second commute, and smash your alarm clocks for the rest of your life? Okay, yeah. the key thing is this here, you must come to events. You've got to understand the art of events. The events is not for the upline to make money, it's for you to be able to sustain your organization. The thing that I understand is this. Remember what I said. I want you to look at the 97 percenters and I want you to look at the 3 percenters. See the difference between how the 3 percenters promote and see what the 97 percenters do. How many events do you think Susan Walsh has missed? Zero. How many of you love to have her income? How many events do you think Ron has missed? How many of you love to have his income? How many events have you think I missed? How many of you love to have our income? Look at these people, see what they've done, and just duplicate what they've done. Trust me, you can't have 50% of their income by doing 50% of what they did. Doesn't work that way. This is not a linear income, guys. You've got to do the whole deal. And so if there's an event, I want you to understand this. We've got, anybody ever heard that we've got products in this business? Yes. Sell them. Make you some money. Never have an excuse of why you can't come to an event. Because that's where people get impacted. That's where people get impacted. That's where the groups grow. That's where you lock people in. That's where your retention ratio stays. That's where people become a family is at the events. You hear things that you've never heard before. And every single time I see people go to an event, you know what I hear every single time? Man, I wish I had told more people about this event. So now do it in advance. Tell more people about the event before you go. Don't make any excuses about why you can't be there. Go ahead and make a decision and make all the details right. Just go to the events. Just get there. Get your people to events. And remember, build from event to event. Always promote the next event, not the one three, you know, three years down the road. But guess what? We've got a success seminar that's coming up. You should be getting so excited and promoting about the next big function. Now, do you promote for business briefings? Yes, absolutely. You promote for those like crazy. But while you're promoting for those, you promote the next small, I mean, you promote the small things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, and you promote the next big thing. Understand what your calendar is. We have, in February, we're going to have a success seminar. That's what you should be promoting right now. After that, you should be promoting the national like crazy. Remember, guys, there's a difference between employee mentality and wealth mentality. Wealth mentality people promote, and they're already registered. The reason why some of you can't promote because you're not registered. And most of you don't feel like being a hypocrite, so you just keep your mouth shut and don't say anything about events. And what you're doing is poisoning your organization because you're not providing them the atmosphere that's going to make their business grow. The other thing is this, guys. We teach in masses here. See, it's, the reason that we're having this training here is because it's better for me to teach a couple of hundred people, do it one time, then for me to call each and every one of you up individually and try to give you this training on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You follow what I'm saying? So why not have thousands of people 
all at one time, getting that synergy, getting that energy, getting that effort. I'm telling you guys, that's what happens. My 12 years in the business, I've never missed an event, ever, ever, never, ever, 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 ever missed an event in network marketing. I remember when Bobby went to one of his first events, he came back, and I'm giving you an example of somebody who was an incredible promoter of events. But I want to give you a timeline real quick, and I want to share with you, because of that, why his business is where it is right now. See, most people think, okay, well, when I become a platinum or when I become a gold or a diamond or a silver, I'll start promoting like that. No, if you never promote like that, you'll never reach that pin level. What comes first, chicken or the egg? Comes the chicken comes first, not the egg. I can remember this. Bobby was a director, if he was a, even a director. He went, I think it was convention. Didn't have a big group, had a very, very, very small group. Nobody knew it. Nobody knew it. He came back and was the first, and now he was one of the smallest pins in my organization. He came back and said, hey, listen, the first day, I got 19 people registered for the next event. I want to share something with you guys. 19 people was a director making no money. Nobody knew it. Just a director. But guess what? Those 19 people went. Those 19 people understood the importance of registering early. And now they picked up a habit of registering early. They picked up the habit and the spirit of how to promote and how to get to events. And so they started promoting. How many people did you end up with at that event? 27. 27. He ended up with 27 people. He probably had somewhere about 40, 50 people in his group. How many people did you have in your group? So, about 75 people. So he had 75. So he had, what, 33% of his group that was at an event. Now, this is what happened. He had 27 people there. Those people came, they got fired up, they got juiced up, they got so excited. He called up, I'll never forget, he called up one of the guys over in California last minute, said, hey, you need to be here in Florida. You need to be here. If you're real serious about making a six-figure income and, and having a lifestyle that you're talking about, you need to be here. He got that person to come, and then that person, that was Joe, and then Joe got Mark to come. Mark had just gotten the business, paid a lot for his plane ticket because it was less than seven days before he booked it, went to convention. Let me share what happened. Because those two people came. The 27 people came as well, but two of the 27 were from California. They understood the importance of events. The first event that they've ever hosted was the power training that Bobby and Regina just did, and they had 114 people at their first power training. Right. Guys, do you understand the power of that? <laughs> do you think he's the number one silver-headed goal right now because he learned this? Or do you think that he learned this because he's the number one silver headed goal? It's because he learned this and he did this is why his income is where it is. Let me give you something even bigger. His group in California have over 40% of the people in their entire group plugged into functions. Over 40%. They don't understand anything else but to promote for an event. Look at every category, even the rookies. They understand how to promote for events. People, now, guess what? Just got a call last night, Thursday. They had 95 people at their business briefing with no guest speaker there. Over 30 plus guests that were there. He taught them how to promote for events. Bigger one. We just had a series of power trainings. And in those power trainings, there were around 1,000 people. Over 1,000 people that we had at power trainings around the country. 21 different power trainings. 20% of the people who were at power trainings in the entire company came from his organization. Whoa. So do you think that you can have zero people at a function and make this type of income? No. No. Guys, when I, and I told Bobby this, guys, let me share something with you. When you get to the income levels or the pin levels of where we are, I believe that it's going to be bigger. I believe it's going to be better. I believe that you'll make more money than we did. When I was a silver, guess what? I was a silver, and I can remember, doing bronze volume. I was a silver, but not qualified as a silver that month. I was qualified only as a bronze that month. We had a power training. Text came down, and I had, we had 40-something people there. I only had 21 people of them. 21 of those 40-something people were in my group. I was a silver. 
21 people. Silver here, over 200 people in Israel organization. Now, we, got, we made a decision that we were ready to build. We started building, we started promoting for these events, made a decision, went from bronze, silver, but doing bronze volume, 22 days later, we were gold executives in the company. We went from 21 people at a local function to having over 100 in Vegas because we made a decision of what we were going to do, and it, became, it came by plugging people into events. The thing I understand is this. After every major event that we have, our income goes up. People are excited. People are fired up. Promote the system. Edify the upline. Promote the system. Edify the upline. If you're going to make it in this business, it's because you have learned the art of becoming an incredible promoter, and you've learned the art of edification. The events is the lifeline of your business. Get excited about the events. Don't make decisions late. Do what successful people do. They make decisions, and then they make those decisions the right decision. Congratulations on completing this series. You've just learned what it takes to turn your network marketing business into a cash cow. Let's take this information, learn it, do it, and teach it, and we'll see you at the bank. While the techniques and approaches suggested here have worked for others, no one can guarantee that they will work for you. We sincerely hope, however, that the ideas presented here will assist you in building a strong and profitable business. This has been a 3K Marketing Group production. Unauthorized duplication of the CD is strictly prohibited. To purchase this audio program, go to www.3kmg.com.